For the past few months, a new type of science is being carried out in the underground clean rooms of the CEMES laboratory of Toulouse. A different breed of researchers has been flocking to this city in the south of France from all over the world. They're training for an unprecedented competition at the crossroads of physics and motorsports. Welcome to the nanocar race. Frank Eisenhut will be driving the German nanocar developed by his team from the University of Dresden. He'll be competing against other nanocars during the international race in the fall of 2016. No steering wheel or gas pedal in Frank's cockpit, only the computers he uses to control the world's tiniest racing car. What you can see here, firstly, is a gold surface. And on this gold surface, you see some higher parts, and these are molecules on the surface. What we're going to try to do now is um, to move these molecular assemblies in a certain direction. And this is what, what I'm going to try to do. The race will be invisible to the naked eye. The vehicles are a million times smaller than a millimeter. In order to see them, the researchers use a device called a Scanning Tunneling Microscope, or STM. The specific microscope used here in Toulouse is one of the few STMs in the world with several separate scanning tips that will allow four drivers to compete at the same time. The tunneling microscope works like this. You have a small tip which you slowly move towards a surface. Here it's my hand. You maintain a small voltage difference between the tip and the surface. As you move it closer at one point when the tip is very near the surface, less than a nanometer, a tiny current will appear between the point and the surface. The tip of the microscope scans and analyzes a given surface and gradually renders an image on the control screens. But not only does it read what's on the surface, it also transfers electrons that can then stimulate the nanocars driving them down the track. These racing conditions are particularly hostile. The track is maintained at minus 270 degrees Celsius, and at this infinitely small scale, the laws of physics are drastically different from those we encounter in our macroscopic world. No need to use a special tarmac for grip. These researchers use a racetrack made of gold. This is the small gold chip which will be used for the race. It will be set inside the ultra-high vacuum before we place the molecules on it. We chose gold because when its surface is well polished and prepared, you get pads that are not very high and can guide the cars. Here you see the roads or tracks which occur when you prepare the surface. The molecule vehicles of each team are evaporated onto the surface and end up scattered randomly on the gold racetrack. Each driver is then free to choose which one to move by targeting it with the tip of the microscope. He can then hope to send it racing at 5 nanometers an hour. The idea is to cover the longest distance during the 38-hour race this fall, all without destroying these delicate nanocars. We're quite excited about it, to have firstly the chance to be on such a competition, to work on such a machine is uh, quite unique in the world. It's not like driving fast cars. Uh, it's not like adrenaline, like being patient in every second. It's uh, more like a video game maybe. It needs a certain time to see what happened to your molecule. And this is the exciting time. You see, okay, something changed. And after three minutes, you see what happened. If you have destroyed just, or if it moves, if it rotates, uh, or if it's just at the same position as before. For this competition to even be feasible, each participating team had to develop its own racing molecule. The nanocars are built using around 100 atoms or less, and their design is key to the race strategy. A windmill shape for the German team, a dragster for the Americans, the nanocars on the lineup all have their own specific features. Gwenaël Rappen, the chemist working for the French team, imagined and then produced their competing molecule. Its shape is inspired by the chassis of an ordinary car. 
The nano car competing for the Toulouse team is in fact quite big. It might be one of the biggest in the race. What's special about it is that it is very stiff. The only things that can move are the wheels. So we've got four wheels just like the cars we're familiar with in our macroscopic world. These R's symbolize the wheels. You can easily imagine these wheels will start to turn on the surface as the molecule is stimulated by electrons from the tunneling microscope. Each person will be able to control the flux of electrons directed towards their molecule and the position of the tip on the surface. This is going to be a level playing field, as we will all be on the same surface at the same time and at the same temperature, with the same tool and the same fuel, that's to say electrons. So it will be the nanocar's intrinsic features which will determine if it wins or not. These upcoming months, all teams will work on a warm-up lap in real racing conditions. They will get to familiarize themselves with this scanning tunneling microscope, as well as the behavior of their specific molecules. All four racing molecules will be on the starting grid of the gold track, prepped for a day and a half of racing. The organizers have yet to confirm whether or not the winning team will receive a nano trophy.